Hi there, this is Jeff, and welcome to those that are new to my channel and those that do subscribe. I just wanted to show in this little video today and demonstrate the different types of uh, tape measures that are used in, uh, in our industry, and the diff particularly the different class types of tape measure, because uh, as we say in the joinery world, tape measures aren't tape measures. You've got different class types from class one to class three. Um, so I'm gonna show you the different types of tape measures that we use and how accurate they are. Explain to you, I'm gonna to explain to you how accurate they can be. And I'm even gonna show you how to check your tape measure to see how accurate it really is or um, check it for calibration. So keep watching and you might learn something in this video on your tape measures. For those that don't know, uh, tape measures, they come in three different class types, class one, two, and three. And the lower that class type, i.e. class number one, being the most accurate. And you can identify the different types of um, class types in a tape measure, generally by looking, uh, well, it may, it may say it on the packaging, but it may also say, it, it should also say it actually on the, the tape measure itself. We, uh, sometimes it might just say uh, a number one, I might have a two. Um, and if generally, if you don't see anything on the tape measure at all, you could possibly consider that a type three or a class three, perhaps. Um, so yeah, look, uh, class one, two, and three are the different types of tape measures that you can get. Now. What's the difference between a class one and a, and a class three? Well, it could be up to, you know, the, uh, the main thing that, um, what does make a difference in the accuracy of the tape measures is especially in long distances. We're talking about if you've got to measure a piece of timber or a piece of board that's two, three, four, five meters long, that's where you're gonna get that discrepancy or inaccuracy. And in a class three, uh, if, you measure, if you're measuring something uh, around about 10 metres long, it could be up to four and a half to five millimetres difference in a class three. Uh, on, on a class two, I believe, on a 10 metre length uh, measurement, uh, the, the uh, inaccuracy could be up to around about two and a half millimetres. And on a class one, uh, expect to see around about, in a 10 metre um, uh, measurement, expect to see around about 1.1 millimetre, so around one to two millimetre difference, which is you know, pretty fair considering the distance that you've got to measure and, and you know, how these are actually made. So um, in maybe the carpentry world out there, you know, making frames, it's not too critical. Um, it may not be a big deal um, between a class one or a class two because generally the, the, the most of the tape measures that you do pick up at your local hardware or, or tool supplier, they're going to be class two. And in a 10 metre distance and you are measuring something that's that long or five to 10 metres and, and if you have a, something that's around about um, two to three millimetres out and it may not make a difference to you but in the cabinet making world sometimes where we work to the millimetre, it may make a difference. And stick around because I'm gonna show you a way that you could, um, if you don't have a class one tape measure, um, there is another way that you could, or an alternative uh, method that you could use to get an accurate measurement over that long distance. Okay, I've got a few class one um, tape measures, but I've just brought out one to show you as an example. And this one is only a little five meter one. I, I actually like this little um, tape measure. It's, it's small and compact for five meters. Uh, if you compare this to another uh, five meter tape measure, and there's another five meter tape measure. So it's around about that small compact size. Five meters is good. You can slip it into your pocket nice and easily. Um, but if you are, obviously if you're on a construction site and so on, this is probably not gonna be ideal. You're probably gonna need a, a seven and a half to eight meter tape measure. 
Um, and sorry for the Americans that are yeah, maybe watching this movie. I know that these are pretty much all metric versions, but they can be purchased in uh, Imperial, obviously. But just to, it's just basically to show you um, the difference between the class types um, and uh, how they work. But this one here is a good example of a, a class one. It's a high quality Japanese uh, model and it is a little bit more expensive compared to the class twos. Uh, but having said that, not by, not by a lot, for a really good quality um, class two at your normal uh, hardware or tool supplier um, in Australia, we might pay around about $30. Whereas this thing here I bought on Amazon was about $40 for a class one. So it's a little bit more um, for one of these, but um, you are going to get a higher level of accuracy, um, especially in your lower range measuring, uh, up to your higher uh, range measuring, up to 10 metres, you're not going to get much di difference. Um, and sometimes that can make a little bit of a difference, you know, where um, you know, if you're cutting a long piece of board or a piece of timber and you go measure it out, you cut it, you bring it back and you find out it's, you know, two, three millimetres longer and it has to fit in a certain spot, well then that makes a little bit of a difference and you've got to go back and trim it. So having a good um, quality tape measure that is accurate um, does make a difference. Now, you can check the accuracy of your tape measures. Um, there is a couple of ways of doing it. The easiest way of doing it is getting yourself a good quality steel rule. Uh, this one happens to be a good quality Japanese um, variant. It does have inches on the back, uh, millimeter increments on the front, uh, and you can measure it or you can check the accuracy of your tape measure by um, comparing the increments on your tape measure to your steel rule. And if they do line up, then you know that all the increments on the tape measure and your, and your steel rule are line up, you know that it's pretty accurate. Um, the difference is being when you get a, a cheaper version tape measure and you go to put it on your scale on this uh, steel ruler, the measurements down the end are uh, out, you know, the tape measure is out. But obviously the longer the steel ruler, the better. Uh, but yeah, that's another, that's one way of actually checking the calibration of your tape measure or checking how accurate your tape measure is. There is another th um, method of measuring something I just wanted to share with you. Uh, my pro tip here, if you do have something long that you do want to measure and you want to get um, that measurement super accurate or accurate as you can and you don't have a class one tape measure there is another alternative trick that you can do and that involves using a laser distance measurer okay a laser distance measurer these are your friend you, you uh, if you don't have one of these it's really good investment and let me share something with you i I only had a class, I only bought this class one tape measure just very recently. I, I always just had a, a normal tape measure, class two variant type of styles. Um, and, but I did have one of these laser measures because this is something that you should probably try to get in your uh, toolkit. I'm not trying to promote one of these or, or I'm sponsored by any of these uh, tape measures or tools, but these are a really good handy tool for measuring, um, let's say for a room, uh, walls, or something long where you can't, you know, reach out your tape measure and expand it for, you know, five or six meters. It's not going to work. These are really good for getting, you know, long measurements or in, or measurements in a room, uh, wall to wall, for example. Um, but you can use one of these if you wanted to do long distance measurements and you wanted it accurately. Um, so I'll show you a little trick with this. So for example, if you wanted to cut some board and you wanted to use a laser measure, if you didn't have a, a good accurate tape measure. There is a trick that you can do using this, and it's quite easy. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so say you wanted to use your laser measurer and to get a really accurate measurement over a long distance to cut, could be for a board or a piece of timber that needed to fit in somewhere nice and snug. Using your tape measure, measure out your measurement that you wanted to cut accurately. So for example, I'll do 2206, just make a little mark. And then what you do is get yourself a couple of little blocks, something that's going to sit on, uh, upright nicely and not fall over. And you want to put one of these blocks down the end 
and you want it to sit towards the end of your piece of timber. So I'll just move this on the bench so it sits there. And then you get your laser distance measurer and you sit this up against that block and then you move the other block. You put that roughly on your mark that you marked out with your tape measure and you see how accurate you are. So my laser distance measure told me that I was 22, oops, 2207.3. So you can see over that distance there, just with that tape measure, I was supposed to be measuring 2206 and I'm 1.3 millimeters out. So that 1.3 millimeters, not much, but it could make a difference if you're trying uh, to make this board fit nice and snug. But it's just a matter of using your laser distance measurer and moving the block on this side closer or further away till you get it right, then square your line across and cut to your line of, of course. That's another little trick using a laser distance measurer. Um, if you didn't have a really accurate tape measure or you want it to be super accurate, um, these are handy as well. I do um, use that a lot sometimes when I do want super accurate tight measurements with uh, minimal tolerance. I just thought I'd stop and um, share this little feature that I found, um, particularly with a couple of my tape measures that I have. Uh, this Tajima brand uh, has it. Again, I'm not sponsored by these guys, and I've got another little small tape measure that has it also. But it's basically an auto stop uh, system. So you pull the tape measure out, and it basically stays there without having to lock it manually with the tab. But with this one, just press the top of the tab and it will retract. So it's very handy, you just want to pull it out, you've got to mark something, or, you know, if you really wanted to, um, if you had to hold the end of this tape, for example. And, but um, it also comes in handy if you've got to actually feed the tape measure out for a long measurement that you're having to expand it out to, uh, where it feels a bit weird actually, because you just push, you're just pulling it out, you're not fighting against the tape measure blade like a, like a traditional one, like so this one here, you'd have to have your finger underneath the tape measure there or, or actually physically lock it as you're, as you're pulling it out. You've got to put your finger there to stop it from wanting to retract. Whereas this feature here, you're not, doing, you're not fighting against the blade wanting to retract, you're just flowing uh, on the outward trail. So that one there, that Tajima brand, that's another class one Tajima one there, that tape measure. Um, I will leave links for all these tape measures, of course, in the, um, in the description, but I do have another little small three meter tape measure that has the same sort of feature as well. And it's a class two tape measure that happened to find this one and has that auto lock feature. So I just sort of mentioned that to you, keep an eye out for it. It's a really handy feature. Uh, it might be something that you're looking for, but, uh, and you might not even know about that, but um, that's a, yeah, an auto stop um, set up and on the Tajimas for some reason they call it a Sigma stop now I'm not sure if that's um, the same terminology used for other brands if they call their auto stop that or if it's just something that Tajima does but um, yeah just keep an eye out for that it's an auto stop setup um, with the tape measures Well, that just about wraps up this video today and I hope you enjoyed it or even learnt something from this. And it was just basically to teach you guys about class one, two and three variants with, you know, when choosing a, a tape measure and also about uh, measuring accurately. Uh, there are some ways to go about, you know, if you wanted to measure something uh, super accurate um, and that is choosing the right measuring tool to do that basically using a class one tape measure or laser distance measure as I've shown in the video. But it's also about choosing the right tape measure for the application. Like I said previously, if you are uh, working on f housing like frames and timber work where it's not gonna matter if you're a couple of millimeters out, then you know your, your general uh, class two tape measures from your tool supplier is gonna, gonna work nicely for you. But if you work in a profession where you want uh, super accurate uh, measurements and you work to the millimeter, then uh, maybe choosing a class one type measure, um, measuring tape uh, will work for you. So it's all about, like I said, choosing the right tape measure for the application. So, well, uh, if you did like this video, I hope um, you, you did, just press like, share with your friends. 
And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all the latest videos that I bring out from time to time. And hopefully I will see you in one of my next videos.